So the player here, um, you know what? I, I've seen clips, I've seen the, the trailer. I, it, it's action-packed and mysterious at the same time. Where did you come up with the concept? Uh, John Fox, actually one of the producers from The Blacklist, and I were talking about the old pulp shows. The idea that, you know, we've gone really heavy on serialization. Where was the show that was just one great story a week? Just one kick-ass adventure a week? And it's about, I don't want to do just one kind of crime. Like, it's almost like a decathlon of crime. Like, you know, he's doing this and that and this. And John said, well, like gambling. And I said, well, it's ridiculous. You can't gamble on crime, John. I mean, you'd have to be the most rich, corrupt, horrible. Oh, there we go. There's the show. Yeah. And it literally happened in a conversation. Like, what if there's a game out there, we're all trapped in it, we don't know the rules, and one guy is on our side? That's a compelling story. That's a great adventure for me. Is that why the uh, backdrop of the story is it Las Vegas? Yeah, we really want to leave the ethos. We really want to live in that whole vibe of, you know, this is kind of the dark underbelly of American culture. We love gambling. We love risk. We love our action heroes. Uh, there's a dark side to that, and Vegas is a great city of both light and dark. Is the show going to be constrained to that one city, or eventually you're going no, to No, we'll on? go out. You'll find very early that some of the bets take you out. We don't go too far afield. And there are actually story reasons we can't go everywhere yet uh, that we kind of reveal as you reveal the mythology of the show and how the house is arranged and what the rules are. Uh, but it's kind of in and out, half and half for the first couple episodes. Now, one of the big things that uh, that's going to be a huge draw is the fact that you have Wesley Snipes. I mean, oh, yeah. I, I mean, when you first heard of it, that you got him, I mean, what well, was we it? had to go get him. I mean, you know, Barrett Nalluri and I, the director, went and had dinner with him, and said, like, look, this this role, uh, and it was actually he's a giant blacklist fan, so he's actually had, we were so lucky he was considering TV. <laughs> and, hey, hey. Um, we went to dinner with him, and like, look, the the thing about this character is he is a man of presence. He is one of the most secretly most powerful men in the world and yet he's a man of violence and he came up hard. And there's gotta be episodes because he's the guy who keeps the entire thing running. He's the guy who keeps the conspiracy running. Half the time you go, he's awful. And half the time you go, wow, I kinda like him. Like he's a good guy. He gets to play a good guy and a bad guy alternating weeks. You know, sometimes he'll step in and help Phil or Alex Kane because it suits his agenda. Sometimes Alex Kane's about to die and he's like, eh, outside the rules, man. And, and that was what was interesting, was creating a character who was not immoral, but was more about his ethical frame. He believes things are important. He believes the game, as horrible as it is, is important. And there's a speech he has, like episode three or four, where he explains how the game was born. You should hear that and go, oh, maybe he's right. As horrible as this is, maybe this is the best possible system. So you're using the same formula, like the Blacklist? I mean, I have to admit, I watch it, it's, it is addicting. There's just something about it's, it. It's one degree off because uh, it's a little less procedural and a little bit more adventure. So, you know, like the Blacklist, they get the bad guy of the week, they go after the bad guy of the week. It's a great format, I love it. I'm a giant fan, Weston's a giant fan, it's one of the reasons he's doing the show. For me, I really want the bet to be vague. Like, you just have to stop this, and it's up to Alex to go, well, wait, what, is it? what, 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 about, what about the innocent people in the middle of it? Why is that happening? You know, so part of it is him pulling apart that crime every week. And there's episodes where in the first two minutes it's like, oh, I know I got to do. There's some episodes where by act four he's still like, I'm not sure, all I'm doing, people are trying to kill me, I'm not sure what's going on. Yeah. So that's the fun of it. It's a bigger, broader, more adventure format. I think we're, they're very thriller and we're sort of more conspiracy adventure. And the player doesn't always win, right? Obviously he has the to The player does not always win, he loses. And, and now the question is, why does he lose? When does he lose? What are the ramifications? And so does he sometimes choose to lose because it's the right thing to do for him? And how long can you get away with that before the game is like, we can get another player? You know, because he's not the first by far. So if I was going to bet on the player, what are my odds? Is it 50-50? No, that would be a boring game. <laughs> most of the time, most of the time, uh, Cassandra's explaining, they're pretty sure you're going to be dead in the next six hours. But that's the fun of it, is watching one guy fight impossible odds every week. And we actually, during the game, you see the odds change uh -huh. as the circumstances change, as the gamblers start to believe in him or not believe in him, whether he can pull this off or not. So that's part of the fun of it. Well, I think the part of the fun, if you actually set up a website and I could actually bet on the game. We <laughs> may do that. That's certainly something we're talking about, is making a really interactive site so that every week you can decide whether you think he's going to pull it off or not. Because, yeah, the bet, per se, is not something he's going to win every week. Yeah, that's true. Well, anyways, it, it's um, it's great to speak with you. But anyways, this is Comic Con. It sounds like you go to Wonder Con and oh, yeah. big um, New York Comic Con. And one of the big things that I'm trying to ask everybody is because Star Wars is coming up, and it is a big thing. And I want to know what Star Wars meant to you. Uh, Star Wars, to me, 
was the thing that made me, when I was a kid, my bed had like the, the, the bed knob, and I would have been maybe, in 1977, right? I would have been 10 years old. And holding that bed knob like it was the joystick in the X-Wing fighter, and just rerunning that sequence over and over again. <laughs> you know, it's, it's one of our modern myths. It's incredibly powerful for a, in multiple generations. One of the things that makes me happiest, I, I went, I'm friends with Jay Barishaw, remember they did that yeah. show, Fanboys? I went to the screening of that, and it was my first Star Wars convention, and I saw the new generation of kids who just knew about the cartoons. Yeah. And I'm like, this is something that whole families can get behind. It's a cool, positive influence on our lives and our culture. What's not to like? I bet Except you. Except Jar Jar. No, nobody likes Jar Jar. And, and I know you're going to be first in line. I uh, know. I'm, I'm old, man. I wait. I wait now. I let the kids be first in line. I'll go to the matinee. I'll wait. I'll wait till they go. Cool deal. Hey, it's a pleasure thank speaking so with you. Hey, thank you for speaking.